our our uh, uh, responsibility is to present the Vedic perspective, the Puranic view of history. I believe that Srila Prabhupada created the Bhakti Vedanta Institute because he wanted his scientist disciples, and remember, he was very proud of his scientist mm-hmm. disciples. He didn't say, reject your education in science. <laughs> he was very, very, he encouraged them. The Bhaktivedanta Institute was the one project that he sanctioned for receiving funding, as, not as loans to be repaid, but just as funds for maintenance. It was the one project that he would support without saying you have to repay the money. That's how serious he was about wanting to see Krishna consciousness established by the Bhaktivedanta Institute as scientifically respectable. Not necessarily compatible with what science says, but as scientifically respectable, that there is a scientifically valid base. Hmm. Meaning, Meaning that if someone with an open mind applies their intelligence to understanding the Puranic under explanation of the cosmological history, that they will find something reasonable there to consider. That it's not just religious mythology, you know, of wild creatures and, and, and boars and uh, elephant headed uh, gods and, you know, th- the way people will dismiss Hinduism as some uh, mythological religion. See, that's what Prabhupada was looking to avoid was people thinking that Krishna consciousness was Hinduism, that it was some religious mythology. You know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had a very brilliant way of approaching this in his uh, Krishna Samhita. Yes. Where he presented the Bhagavatam in a way that would be acceptable by uh, intellectual readers. And what he described basically was that the reality of the scriptures can be understood according to a person's adhikara, Hmm. according to their spiritual qualification. So that if someone had uh, good material training, uh, educated, intellectual, rational thinking, but perhaps atheist or no interest in religion, their understanding of the Bhagavatam would be as uh, metaphorical. And he presented things in a metaphorical way that Putana uh, is a metaphor for um, uh, a a wayward guru who is not presenting things properly. And, uh, you know, that the um, Agasura demon uh, is, um, you know, the the, the ugly uh, Aga uh, uh, material reality that is going to devour the sincere souls. (laughs) So it's, it's, you know, the embodiment of the, uh, uh, the Asura of Aga. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So this was Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur's uh, brilliant contribution that he recognized some people, their only approach to Bhagavatam cosmology would be as metaphorical. But he accommodated that. He didn't put them down. Yeah. He didn't reject them. He didn't say these people are useless. They're stupid. They have. They're, they're going to hell for their uh, atheistic ideas. He gave them access. Prabhu, is this not our mission? You know, what we're talking about here speaks to a much larger issue, Chaitanya Chan Prabhu. It speaks to our relationship with the world, not just our relationship with science, but it speaks to the position of Vaishnavas in the larger world altogether. That we are here as servants. We are here uh, not to criticize and to put down. Sometimes a strong position is needed if someone is doing harm. If people are being hurt, you have to interfere. You have to stop that. If wrong is being done, as Vaishnavas, we are compelled by our faith to intercede and to stop that wrong. But there is a way to do that. It's from a place of love. It's from a place in our heart that says, this person, because they are so misled, they are, they are so unaware of their own spiritual divinity, they're doing harm. So they, they must be stopped. It's the same, but it's from a place of love. This is such a... So many points you made. Amazing. But the, I'll just try to 
recap and then you can elaborate is that so often we take the metaphorical understanding as as a compromise as something which is undesirable but what you are saying is that the metaphorical understanding is could be an expression of compassion yeah. so for those who so we could say that there is a literal understanding there is a metaphorical understanding and we could say uh, maybe transcendental understanding exactly. so you know talk talks about this in the krishna samhita so the so for some people the literal understanding will be utterly unacceptable and the transcendental understanding will be inaccessible presently based based on the level of consciousness so the only thing that would be except that that could make sense to them would be the metaphorical understanding yes. and bhaktivinoda thakur has provided it that way so it's a rather than a compromise it's actually compassion to provide them some way to engage with engage with this wisdom rather than simply dismiss it or feel threatened by it now we are coming in our discussion to the heart of shrila prabhupad's mission to the heart of krishna consciousness to the heart of our entire guru varga is that we para dukkha dukki our only discomfort is seeing that other people are suffering and our job is to not alienate them but to bring them to krishna do you think that you are doing any kind of service at all if by being so uh, proud of your krishna conscious knowledge that you put someone down because they don't believe in god that you put them down because they they think that science is so wonderful that it it will define life uh, with and they do not understand that consciousness is not a material phenomenon that it comes uh, from a different realm altogether are you doing them any good by 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 your stridency or are you demonstrating your own ignorance of true vaishnava character are you demonstrating your own insensitivity and your own weakness perhaps that you're not so sure of your own position you know I, I, look at tyrants and bullies and you scratch the surface and what you find is someone who's very insecure very weak very uncertain of their own worth and strength 